Hello, Assalamualaikum. Good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Welcome towards your last chapter of OB. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, so we have reached the final destination of the semester. So in today's uh, class, we're gonna take a look at topic thirteen. Yeah, so this is regarding organizational change. Yeah, so I think the topic speaks for itself. Yeah, so let's move on without further ado. Okay. So this is uh, Umpakwa Bank uh, has become the largest regional community bank in Pacific Northwest by applying effective organizational change practices. So that's an uh, interesting case study. I believe you can Google it and learn about it uh, and you can tell me about it later. Yeah, if you want to tell me. Yeah, that is. So let's take a look at how do we do uh, organizational change. In theory wise, it, one of the most famous model for understanding the changes or how to promote changes in an organization is through Lewin's force field analysis model. Yeah, as you can take a look at here, it, it is a combination between a uh, restraining force, the, uh, the, the one from the top, and the bottom one is the driving force in, in the middle is the desi desired level where you want to be. Okay, so this is developed by Kurt Lewin. Uh, you can take a look at here. So uh, I think it's really clear. Let's take a look at how it uh, works in action. So this one is the uh, an example of how it moves. Yeah. So you have the restraining force, whatever it is. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that. Update, but, but in this diagram, we're gonna take a look at how it actually moves in this force field analysis model. Because when we try to move, there seems to be a force. So this uh this Lewin's force field model shows us the who are acting up in this kind of situation and what kind of issues are uh, involved in terms of understanding uh, the situation and the organization as a whole yeah uh, you can take a look at this re the restraining force in the early stages you can take a look at there before change so before change uh, uh, the, the the driving force couldn't get rid of the restraining force me to say they want changes but it, 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 it couldn't simply change because the restraining force is really strong so when it's tried to push to change to a better uh, situation or a better environment then it uh, is called as unfreezing yeah it is called uh, unfreezing because we are trying to remove everything that is creating this kind of issue is it the is it because of the law and regulation is it because of the culture is it because of the people so all of this will be changed so this is what what we call as unfreeze just like an ice yeah imagine an ice when an ice uh, is froze it will be stuck in that kind of position but when you unfreeze it you can mold it to any shape you want so this is basically how force field analysis uh, is being presented here so during the change yeah let's take a look at the second one here during the change producing disequilibrium between driving driving and restraining forces mean to say they are pushing towards uh, uh, producing disequilibrium this equilibrium i believe if you have taken science classes be, during your spam you remember about it but if you don't remember let me just give you a a, a, a bit recall this equilibrium means to say that you are causing imbalance between the two sides so especially that is weakening towards the restraining forces so whatever that makes people who want to accept the new changes there will be a desired way of how to motivate them to work in that kind of situation so as time goes the driving force will become stronger and stronger until it reaches towards the third stage which is after change which is called as refreezing yeah, the system so remain it remains the desired state so you want to ensure that people stay in the current situation okay for for example uh, for instance uh, in the previous uh, in the previous culture workers came to the organization quite late so that was the normal culture there so people don't have any, any urgency to go to work but you as a leader you want to change this so you will be first to unfreeze it so how do you unfreeze the situation you make people aware of the situation and you will say that if you do not change their attitude they will get disciplinary action taken taken upon them so that is the first one unfreezing the situation so when it becomes so the second one which is uh, the change process you will motivate the workers you will make example of workers who came early you will give them motivation you will give them either intrinsic motivation or external motivation you give them praises so people will be much more motivated to come early so they know it's part of the culture if they don't do it they either gonna get disciplinary disciplinary action taken taken upon them or uh, they will get fired or 
if they follow towards this uh, new rules and regulation, new culture, they will get praise and they will be happy in their workplace. So there's a change process. And at the end here, after the change, you refreeze it. So you ensure that people will continue to come at on time uh, regardless, uh, regardless of any situation. Yeah. So that's a restraining process uh, that is. Uh, that matches to what the current situation that the organization needs yeah so let's take a look at what are these uh, cha uh, changes that makes people don't want to uh, don't want to accept this kind of changes yeah this is what we call as restraining forces so this is an example about Hopi uh, you can read it your own it's a very famous Japanese brand yeah so this is a case study so uh, you tend to get this, yeah, many forms of resistance, example complaints, absenteeism, passive non-compliance. So changes in an organization can mean many things. Yeah? It's not only about just uh, making people come to work early or being punctual, but other things such as safety and health so that people are much more uh, understandable on what is causing safety, what is causing health, what is making their job much more productive, what is saving time or saving resources in the organization. Yeah. So these are the kind of resistance people don't want to change complaints uh, people will avoid or people will passive non-compliance meaning that they will totally ignore what you ask them to do yeah view resistance as a resource in terms of this uh, symptoms of deeper problems in the change process a form of constructive conflict may improve decisions in the change process a form of voice helps procedural justice so this is how we take a look at this resistance as a resource I mean to say it is something positive that the organization can have yeah uh, I mean to say that symptoms of deeper problems in the change process I mean to say that there are things that you should tackle yeah because the people who want to change is it because of the culture or is it because something else so you need to dig more into understand that there are some issues that need to be resolved in the organization second is a form of constructive conflict mean to say uh, you improve yeah so remember during we st uh, when we studied about conflict uh, st conflict settling in our previous uh, chapters so we studied about how certain conflict can be beneficial towards the organization as well as the uh, groups in uh, in the teams so this is what we say as something positive that might can out uh, a better decision for all for both sides yeah a form of voice helps the general justice so means say people are voicing out uh, whatever the, the, their dissatisfaction and those dissatisfaction will then be adhered to and will be discussed properly thus allowing for procedural justice yeah procedural justice means uh, uh, it is fair that the, imp uh, the the management is listening towards the concern of the employees so let's take a look at this why people resist change direct cost they don't want to uh, incur much cost here you can take a look at here yeah introduction managers are expected to delegate more power and responsibility to staff but the managers believe that these reforms will give them less power and prestige so that's an example of uh, direct cost that could affect an employee side yeah so if if I ask you to change yeah, for instance okay one of you you have to change then you have to come early then you have to be much more punctual you have to be much more disciplinary but you don't like that because you are much more flexible relaxed like and so that is a direct cost to you yeah you don't want to change because you don't want to change who you are or because you are comfortable in your current environment yeah second one is saving face so you don't want to uh, be embarrassed because of uh, the imperfection that has uh, happened before this it shows that you were not doing your job properly before yeah fear of the unknown yeah i think this is clear you don't you are not sure about the future most most people unwilling to change yeah and most people are unwilling to change because they don't know what's gonna happen yeah so this is going back towards culture in our early early chapters we talk about ua ua refers towards towards uh, towards to uh, uh, av avoidance okay avoidance avoid so you are uncertain you when something that is uncertain you will avoid them okay uncertainty avoidance next is breaking routine so uh, breaking routines people don't want to uh, to change a routine uh, means, means they become accustomed to things that have been done for many times uh, for, for many years imagine you're doing the same things over and over again for the last 10 years would you willing to change that perhaps no because you're not comfortable because this routine it's normal for you you know what's gonna happen you know what's gonna uh, what, what you're gonna do next so when change comes your routine will be disturbed so you don't want to do that yeah that's why people re uh, resist incongruent organizational system remember what is the meaning of incongruent means to say that it's not similar it is called uh, it, it, it is causing some uh, 
some issues that they are not compatible with each other yeah system structures reinforce status quo career reward power communication system into so that the current system in that exists in the organization has their own uh, people that are in act in act but if you change everything perhaps this manager is going to be moved elsewhere or these workers will be moved elsewhere the position of the jobs will be much more different than what they're doing right now so uh, they they probably couldn't be bosses anymore or I mean to say supervisors anymore so they they will lose certain powers if changes comes yeah but this is depends on the kind of changes that will happen in the organization some cha some changes would not have this but other organizational changes might impact in terms of their positions so when that happens their career their reward power it will be created something new something something new will happen in their workplace or their current position that will allow them to be uh, uncomfortable if they are not uh, if they don't know what where they are going after this yeah incongruent team dynamics norms contrary to desired change so they are unfamiliar because they've been doing the same thing with their uh, with their team members they know what they're supposed to do but if there are changes uh, they don't know what uh, uh, they are not familiar they are not comfortable to with the changes so that's what we get incongruent it, it's not compatible towards their towards the desired goal at the end yeah so this is why people resist change creating an urgency for change so you need to tell your employees that why there is a need for change some people uh, will argue like okay we don't need to change uh, we don't need to uh, do all these things we will we'll be still okay so you need to tell them this urgency the importance of changing if not you will uh, fall behind with uh, your other competitors for instance let's take a look i think i've given this so many examples before this like nokia nokia used to be the world's number one phone company but because they were unable to uh, create an urgency of change and unable to see the importance of uh, the changes in the technological uh, aspect then they fell and now uh, they're not leading anymore yeah so those are th those are kind of things I mean, you have to tell your employees that if you do not change the company will fail or some negative effect that will affect everyone in the organization organization yeah so here are the minimizing resistance to change the, just a few communication i think this is clear you need to communicate people uh, communicate to people make them understand learning includes uh, knowledge skills some of these changes might require them to do new jobs such as computer skills that probably they never done before so give them the knowledge give them the skills so that uh, they are much more comfortable they are much more confident in doing their jobs so they are, they are able to take on the changes that might come most of the changes in in current current days are technological uh, changes so you need to teach your uh, workers know how to use uh, technology even nowadays i think during the covid area most people don't even know how to use a qr code yeah you go into the mall and you don't know what is a qr code do you know what's a qr code qr code I hope you guys know because you guys are supposed to be the generation that's supposed to be leading the world in technological uh, advancement yeah next is involvement uh, employees participate as always when they participate they will know more they will be much more confident if just if you just tell them what to do it won't be sufficient they need to be involved in understanding what kind of policy should be created or how they will be affected yeah stress management ah this is always ah. if they are stressed because of the change you you manage the stress properly how do we manage you go back towards our previous chapter negotiation so you negotiate uh for instance you take a look at what is stated here influence by exchange reduces direct costs may be necessary when people clearly lose something and won't otherwise support change problems expensive gains compli compliance not compliment com commitment Make to say that when you do something when you when when they do something for the change they will get something in return okay for instance if they get if they do the changes perhaps they get much more increment in their salary or perhaps that they, they the work that they have been doing would, would be much lesser so there is negotiation so if they follow through towards this then they will receive this kind of benefits or if they are having problem in terms of understanding they can understand through 
two classes that we have discussed just now just under learning there so this negotiation factors it is basically give and take yeah so you do something for me i will give something for you or if you uh, you should be on board with this change program and in uh, in return you could probably do your job uh, in a different way that is much more convenient so it's easing out the process yeah so problems is probably much more expensive because uh, these kind of things require uh, many people to get involved especially with technology that they don't know uh, how to implement it so in the future when this kind of situation happens they have to retrain again and when you retrain people again you have to uh, Im invest much more money yeah against compliance not commitment so uh, compliance is kepatuhan so they just follow whatever you say but no commitment in what they're doing because it's a negotiation so if suddenly you take away the thing that uh, it, you give them in return, they will not do their job. So that's a work of problems. And last one, I think is the most famous one is coercion. You paksa them lah. Okay, if you don't do it, yeah, get out of the organization. As simple as that. Yeah. So this is a disciplinary method. Yeah. Uh, if they're uh, causing problem in the organization, perhaps they're not supposed to be in that organization anymore. Yeah. Refreshing the desired condition. When you are leading for the growth, you know you are going to disrupt comfortable routines and ask for new behavior, uh, new priorities, new skills, even when we want to change and do change. We tend to relax and the rubber band snaps us back into our comfort zone. So this is an example of uh, Umpukwa Bank before this. So it basically, basically says that if you do not uh, if you are if you are not comfortable co with the current situation, you will still go back towards the original state, and the changes uh, will be meaningless. Yeah. So you need to refreeze the current situation. How do you refreeze? Yeah. So you can take a look at this. Alter rewards will reinforce new behavior. So this is the in previous uh, slides before this I talk about motivation. So this is kind of motivation. You, you reinforce them. Okay. You give them motivation. You give them. Uh, benefits that uh, will make them to be reinforced in that cap situation yeah change career paths mean to say that uh, if their former uh, job position has been changed so you need to create a new career path that is much more attractive to them perhaps before this uh, they end their uh, jobs quite early but because of the changes now they have much more options to go through yeah Revised information system, so it, it takes a look at how we are di disseminating information in the organization, how do we share information from one side to another. So when people are uh, disseminated, uh, sorry, when people are receiving information from other people, they, are, they can uh, ask questions, they can get uh, information to, to confirm towards their uh, inquiry. So all of this will allow for a situation in the organization to re to freeze back so people would not go back toward the the past yeah the the unwanted situation yeah so you refreeze the desired condition what you want to what you want to have in the organization change agents so uh, this is a change agent this is the person that is encouraging perhaps a, a person the organization organization that everybody everybody knows that everybody likes because when people like someone else uh, for instance in in your organization they will follow what they say uh, say we say these people as influential okay they can influence other people so this change agent they will go towards this uh, group of employees saying that oh we can do this oh you can do that they will be the one motivating them yeah so you will create this communication between them yeah so this is also in engage in transformation leadership in previous slide we talk about uh, sorry previous chapter we talk about uh, leadership yeah if you remember there are two types right transactional and transformational so in terms of this you need to create a transformational leadership you need to change transform the organization yeah so you in terms of doing it to develop vision communicate the vision act consistently with the vision and build commitment to the vision strategic vision and change yeah as always you need to create this vision desired future state what you want to do yeah identify critical success factors what factors are needed minimize employee fear of the known and clarify role perception so i think there's a what uh, what a few things that there is needed in terms of strategic vision and change diffusion of change so uh, the word diffusion here refers towards uh, the spreading out I mean to say it, it is being practiced everywhere uh, it, it can be seen anywhere else in the organization so it's mean it's diffuse yeah diffuse a uh, 
for instance if you have a glass of water yeah clear water and then you put uh, a red dye there that dye will diffuse and the entire uh, glass water will be red so that's meaning of the diffusion of sense so, so you want to diffuse the change in the organization yeah begin change as a pilot project it started as a, a, a few people participating or a few departments then as time goes you will explore more and more and more people will be involved yeah effective diffusion consider mass model so you can read it here in the mass model because you guys are familiar with it yeah remember mass model i hope you do yeah diffusion of change done now let's take a look at how action research process okay approaches to organizational change action research process approach means to say that if there is a problem then there needs to be a research done conducted yeah so we'll take a look at this to achieve the goal of change research the testing application of concepts so you we have so many concepts uh, even in studying ob we have so many models you can apply so many concepts in order to solve this kind of issue so this is action research principle uh, uh, research so it, it basis open system uh, it uh, in involve external factors and internal factors to communicate so you will have understanding of uh, other other people's perspective on the issue itself not only from your own organization highly participative process uh, I mean say people are or everyone in the organization is involved because everyone have their own opinion uh, everyone have their own solution towards an issue data driven problem oriented process so they will focus much more on data so they will not uh, hunches oh probably this is going to happen no they will take a look at numbers yeah uh, and this is much more statistical yeah you can take a look at this how it is being done Ac action research process from client consultation uh, relation so you create that kind of relation who who what is the problem and who what needs to be solved they will that will be uh, your job to do to solve it yeah and your client is basically organization diagnose the change and analyze data introduce intervention so this is basically uh, whatever issues that they want to solve you can take a look at this implement the desired uh, incrementally slow phase or quantum quantum means uh, decisively and quick so it's talking about change fast so sometimes you want to go slow uh, for the changes perhaps one or two months or even a year to 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 make changes so this is what we call as incremental but if you want to make sure that it's uh, been done fast it is called as quantum yeah quantum change next you evaluate change uh, stabilize change determine the change effectiveness refreeze new conditions so disengage consultant service so this is basically action research process so this is bbc takes the appreciative journey so you can read it on your own here now we're going to take a look at appreciative journey so what is appreciative journey let's just look at here yeah so appreciative inquiry yeah frames change around positive and possible future rather than traditional problem focus so they don't in appreciative inquiry they ask what is the positive things that are being done in the organization or what what kind of positive things are that, that they see in the organization that that can be achieved in the future rather than uh, problems uh, basically in the in the past they were like research the remember research action research problem they will ask for the problem but for appreciative inquiry they will always take a look what can you achieve in the future yeah, yeah I hope you can differentiate between these two uh, action action sorry action research problem will take a look at the past but uh, appreciative will take a look at something that is positive that you can achieve in the future yeah so you can do application of positive OB so there are five principles of appreciative inquiry. Number one is positive principles, always focus, focusing on the positive one. Yeah. For instance, in the organization, everyone is very helpful toward each other. So that's kind of positive principle that you want to highlight, and how that kind of pos positive principle can be diffused throughout the or organization, so that everyone will continue to help each other. Yeah. Sorry, there was a mosquito. <laughs> excuse me constructive principle how we perceive and understand the change process depends on questions we ask and language we use throughout the process so this is basically you 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 construct something you build something up that is positive in the organization that you want to achieve in the future yeah simultaneous principle so inquiry and change are simultaneous not sequential so i hope you know what's the meaning of uh, simultaneous simultaneous means at the same time so simultaneous principle basically says that if you ask something 
you already know what you're gonna answer okay it's not like you gonna do research or you have to wait so much time or you wait for other people to give answer for you so it's not sequential it's basically when you inquire something when you ask something you already know who or what kind of problems or what kind of issues that you want to target yeah for instance I think people need motivation but in your head you already know who they are or what kind of employee needs those kind of motivation I think uh, they need my help when you say they you already know who's uh, who, who wanted to be helped yeah that is what we call as simultaneously it's not like um, I, I think they need help who are they why do they need help so that is not uh, that is not simultaneous that is a uh, sequential yeah poetic principle organizations are open books so we have choices in how they may perceive so uh, it, there are many ways uh, you can see an organization because we talk about culture we talk about people in organization it, there's subcultures everywhere so sometimes you observe something that uh, is very beautiful towards us such as something that's very positive as very simple as such how people in the organization smiles when they meet each other or how people uh, giving gifts towards each other uh, when they're during Christmas or during Hari Raya or having open houses those are kind of poetic principles that you want to see in the organization so we'll, they will ask this kind of uh, situation whether there, it is something positive or should be continued in the organization yeah anticipatory principle something that they will in anticipate I hope you know what is anticipate yeah uh, you, uh, when they anticipate something because they they were given the vision so that kind of vision will guide uh, what they are doing their performance so they will anticipate something that they will get something positive in the future yeah so that is five principles of ai four models of appreciative inquiry uh number one is discovery you this do you discover what is what what's what's put the positive thing inside it you dream okay what it could be in the future and you design how it can be improved so you want everyone to be happy how do you make everyone happy better uh, salary better working teams yeah and you deliver objective of what will be so what will be happening right now what kind of objective you want to achieve what kind of projects you want to do so that it can achieve uh, the, the vision that you wanted in the first place yeah large group intervention so this is large group sometimes uh, when you inter 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 intervene uh, people in large group it it would not be a, that effective because uh, imagine all of you listening to me uh, giving a talk it will not be that uh, effective because you will not feel specialized it could refer to us anyone but anyone else but if it's in small groups then it will be much more effective because I can focus on one by one because so if it's large group it's really hard because you are unable to focus and zoom in one by one and probably uh, probably will not achieve the, the desired goal at the end so it has pro and con such as a um, large group is faster but it saves time it saves energy it saves cost but if it's uh, small groups it uses a lot of resources because you need to use uh, different places you need to use more people and you need to use a lot of things yeah parallel learning structure approach highly positive social structures members represented representative across the formal hierarchy sufficiently free from firms constraint develop solutions for organizational change which are then applied back into the larger organization so this kind of approach is basically saying that this a few group of people that will work together but because they were been working with different departments then they will be the one disseminating them because uh, if you only focus on certain level then only those tables will have changed so how do we how we how do we see this you can take a look at this diagram yeah you can take a look at there are uh, four levels of uh, working on the organization you have the red the blue the purple and the uh, pale blue so all of them will work in a parallel structure they will work together one person from each of these departments or on each of this level and they will try to make the change amongst themselves and when they go back towards each of their level they will try to diffuse it 
feedback they will uh, to ensure that everyone in their level understands every they will come the change agent basically yeah so this is why it says that highly positive social structure so they can join on join in with everyone so that everyone in the organization understand what kind of changes is change uh, is have is have been done in the organization members have been across the formal sufficiently free from firm constraint firm constraint before this you you cannot negotiate with your bosses or uh, your top management but through this now you can freely talk to them and discuss what's really happening in the organization and with that ladies and gentlemen we go towards the second last slide here cross-cultural and ethical concern uh, when we do towards uh, changes in the organization cross-cultural changes in terms of linear and open conflict assumption different values in some cultures yeah it depends on what kind of culture you cannot expect that people will change easily you need to understand their culture first especially if it involves such a, a, a very different contracting uh, contrasting sorry contrasting culture ethical concern privacy rights of individuals some information is very important yeah you cannot share them with any other people so sometimes changes would allow you to have this kind of information so uh, you, you people have the rights yeah management power so how much power can the management force uh, their arbitrary uh, power towards the people so that people will follow them yeah even if the people think that the the changes is uh, negative or they don't like the changes yeah and individual self-esteem uh, how people see themselves in the organization how confident they are with the changes yeah and to conclude our entire uh, syllabus of organizational behavior so let's take a look at this quote from Andrew Carnage yeah he says that take away my people but leave my factories and soon grass will grow on the factory floors take away my factories but leave my people and soon we will have a new and better factory you understand what he's saying i hope you do because you've been uh, taking this course for the entire semester you know that the key are people so people are indispensable you say you cannot uh, change them as easy as that you can always replace technology people can always create technology but you cannot create the same person ever again yeah with that i hope you enjoy our uh, entire semester if there are any uh, issues regarding our online learning do let me know any uh, any suggestion you might have in the future do let me know as well yeah uh, i end this with thank you for being a part of uh, our first <laughs> entire semester of doing it online perhaps uh, next semester we can do it uh, what they call face to face uh, so be safe everyone i see you guys around and we will go back to what's our whatsapp group uh, whatsapp group <laughs> if you have any questions don't be shy to contact me thank you now where do i end this video okay made it bye